there's nine level four dungeons, and unfortunately three of them I was unable to find footage for, namely Darwin's Descent, Tree Leaf's Retreat, and Veil of the Ancients. Particularly bummed about Veil of the Ancients, because that one talked about the gloam and the main plot of Free Realms, but we still have six dungeons to rank. First up on the list is Bandit Hideout. This is the only dungeon that features Chuggawugs as the main enemies, well, technically Thuggawugs because they're wearing masks. It explores the relationship between the Greenwood Archers and a local bandit group, so it gets a 5 on story. It's also going to get a 5 on aesthetic and on layout, but it's a good way to start out our list, and it's by no means a bad dungeon. At number 5 is Croaking Vale. This has you going up against some frog smugglers, which is probably where all the frogs on the marketplace come from. It has a double boss fight, Han and Hannah, but unfortunately there's no dialogue and they function exactly the same. The layout is actually really interesting with lots of bridges and twists and turns, so it's going to get a 6 for that. But story, it's middle of the road 5 because lack of dialogue, and aesthetically, it's, it's pretty simple, so it's going to get a 5 there, coming out at just 1 point over the earlier one at 16 points. Grexon's Camp was one where I could only find the footage of the very end, but I read as much as I could about it. I can't rank the layout because I didn't see the whole thing. I did read, though, that there's a little spider helper you can get in this dungeon, and he'll follow you around and fight with you. Aesthetically, the boss looks cool, and there's cocoons laying around the boss arena, at least probably the whole dungeon, and you can, like, free villagers from them. So we'll give it a 6 for story, a 6 for aesthetic, and a 5 for layout. Coming out just again... One more point over Croaking Veil vale at 17 points. Starting off the top three, we have Mugwort's Hollow. This is one I do remember doing quite a bit as a kid, and it's got an interesting story too. Mugwort is an exiled druid from Shrouded Glade, which is pretty cool. He controls the animals and even their souls, which is kind of crazy. So there's like normal animals and then there's ghost animals that you fight. So it's going to get a seven for story. As far as aesthetic, it'll get a 6 just because it looks kind of nice. The assortment of enemies is interesting, lots of different models. And for layout, it'll get a 4 because it's very long and repetitive. I feel like they could have changed up his dialogue a little bit more, but it's a cool story regardless. Frostfang Caverns at number 2 is going to get an 8 in story because it's one of the only dungeons to have a plot twist. At the outset, all you're told is there's a kid lost in a cave that you need to rescue, but then it turns out that it's actually a shape-shifting wolf that tries to lure people into its den. It's going to get a 6 for aesthetic because it's just an ice cave, which we have seen before. It looks cool, but it's still just an ice cave. And a 7 for layout because the assortment of enemies, it's got a good side quest where you have to beat up this giant bat, and it's not too long. Briar Patch at number one works differently from any other dungeon we've seen so far. It's a very short size-wise, geographically it's only two rooms, but the enemies come in waves. So at first you're fighting wolves and man-eating plants, and then you're fighting these mutated shepherds, which are probably the coolest in-game model I've ever seen. And then you fight someone named Natalie, not Natalie, Natalie. And then finally you get into the real boss fight, and Azure. He's like a wizard doing experiments on the local flora and fauna. He's got these mutated shepherds, they're spawning enemies, and there's a cauldron, which I had to look up and ask for help to understand because I didn't know what it does, heals the boss. So you have to not only take out the add-ons, you have to take out the cauldron that heals the boss, and then he has unique dialogue for different things that you do when you defeat his shepherds or break the cauldron or just when he gets to half health. So I'm kind of a fan of these shorter dungeons because they have more love put into them and just the level of detail in this one is cool. And another thing it gets points for is Azure the boss. He shows up in another battle later. Not a dungeon, but a battle. So he's kind of like a recurring character in, in Free Realms. And that wraps it up for the level four dungeons. If you would have ordered them differently, please leave a comment. I really do love reading those to see what people think their thought process for ordering these two. Or if you agree, hey, let me know too. We've only got one video left in the series, so thank you so much for sticking around this far, and I'll see you in part 5.